The Silent Fury Characters Lila the protagonist, mid-thirties, introspective, and deeply resentful after a dinner gone wrong. Maya Lila's wife, carefree and somewhat oblivious to Lila's swirling emotions. Gillian Anderson, fantasy, the idealized escape figure in Lila's mind, representing the life she dreams of but can't seem to reach. Lila sat silently on the couch, arms crossed, her face a carefully constructed mask of indifference. Inside, though, there was a tornado, a swirling storm of rage, frustration, and betrayal. She had heard people talk about seeing red when they were angry, but for Lila, it wasn't red. It was a relentless whirlwind of thoughts and emotions that left her gasping for air, desperately trying to find a way out. Maya sat beside her, completely unaware of the storm raging next to her, casually flipping through channels like everything was fine. Like she hadn't just committed the gravest sin imaginable. The audacity of adding salt to the perfectly seasoned meal Lila had spent hours crafting. It wasn't just salt. It was disrespect. A slap in the face. Lila's mind spun wildly. She'd listened to enough true crime podcasts to know how to hide a body. The thought was comforting, if only for a moment. The knives in the kitchen gleamed in her imagination, polished and ready. Maya was good at keeping them sharp. That, at least, she did well. But then, practicalities crept in. How would I do it? Lila mused. A regular knife wouldn't do for a neck. Too messy, too slow. Then she remembered the electric turkey carver. Mum had left it behind after Christmas. It was still in the cupboard. That would do the trick clean and fast. She imagined the blade slicing through the delicate skin of Maya's throat, her long, graceful neck. The same neck I wanted to kiss just an hour ago, Lila thought with bitter irony. But then what? Lila didn't want to end up in prison, obviously. She had bills to pay, a mortgage to split. Could I afford this place on my own? No, definitely not. Her thoughts drifted to fantasies of a new life, a new partner. Someone who appreciated her. Maybe someone older, like Gillian Anderson, someone refined, wealthy, who could sweep her off her feet, and away from the monotony of their small apartment. Lila imagined living in a posh house, doing Pilates in designer leggings, sipping champagne at brunches with other women of leisure. But even the fantasy wasn't enough to distract her from the hurt. She added salt to my food. The tornado picked up speed again, thoughts swirling faster. I could just give her the silent treatment. Wait her out until she apologizes. But how could she not know? How could she not realize what she did? Lila's frustration boiled over as she glanced at Maya, who still sat there, obliviously chuckling at an episode of The Office, their 50th rewatch and probably still thinking about how cute Pam was. No, this was unforgivable. Not the Pam crush, not even the salt. It was the lack of consideration. The dismissal of all Lila's effort and care. I cook the mushrooms the way she likes, I overcook the pasta for her, and this is the thanks I get. The nerve. She imagined the scene once more, taking the turkey carver, slicing, then disposing of the evidence in the big yellow suitcase from their last vacation. She'd drive to the woods, bury Maya's body deep, and return to a peaceful, solitary life. But then what about the mortgage? Lila's mind circled back to reality, grounding her once again in the harsh practicalities of life. Her fantasy flickered out, replaced by the gnawing realization that Maya wasn't going anywhere. At least, not without an apology. She stole a glance at Maya, who looked so relaxed, 
so unaware of the battle raging beside her. The tornado inside Lila started to slow, leaving her exhausted, deflated. Maybe I won't kill her tonight, she thought begrudgingly. But if she doesn't apologize soon, I swear I'll never let her forget this. The tornado wasn't gone, not completely, but it was settling. For now, 